In this video, I'm going to be showing you the new quad core CR9 stick from CloudNet. I'm also going to be showing you how it performs in the Antutu benchmark application. So you can use that score to compare this stick against other quad core sticks that have been coming out more recently. I'll also be uh, showing you how it fares when you try to carry out various tasks, such as watching videos on XBMC, watching YouTube videos, or surfing the web. Please do give it a video a like if you do like it, and uh, please do share it. <laughs> So before we start talking about the stick, I just wanted you to know that this stick was provided to me by CloudNet, but I did make sure that they'd be happy with me saying whatever I liked before uh, they provided me with a stick. So this is a this is a fully independent review. So when you open the box, what can you expect? The contents is actually pretty standard from what I've seen recently. So you get the stick and then you get this kind of HDMI extension cable. Uh, which you can use to plug into the TV. And you also get this USB extension lead and the USB adapter. What I did find odd though was that I didn't get a power supply with this. Now I did email CloudNet to query why there was no power supply and they came back to me and said that they didn't send one to me because they didn't have a UK adapter, but they would send a power socket usually. So if you do purchase this stick, you will get a power adapter, although I'm using one from another stick I had. There's also a color manual. The English in the manual is still pretty confusing, but I find that I don't really use it anyway. Okay, so let's just talk about the um, technical specification of the CR9 for a moment. The CR9 actually uses the RK3188 quad-core system on chip, like many of the other quad-core sticks that are out there at the moment. The RK3188 actually uses a Cortex-A9 processor. Uh, on the box it says it's running at 1.8 gigahertz, but when I look at the uh, Antutu specifications, it actually says it's running at 1.6. I mean, I'm not sure if this speed will change in future software updates, but the Antutu is reporting it currently at 1.6 gigahertz. In terms of RAM, it's got two gigs, and in terms of uh, memory for storage, the, the stick actually has eight gigs, and there's probably around five gigs available for usage after installation of the operating system. Uh, for graphics, it's got a quad-core Mali 400 GPU, and for operating system, the box says it's got Android 4.1, but actually, it's it's got the Android 4.2.2 operating system on there uh, and that can be seen in the Antutu specifications. Uh, so this was an upgrade since they printed the box I guess. I see that as a very good sign because it shows that CloudNet are up for kind of upgrading their operating system on that stick and you know any bugs uh, that I guess I come across in this build I have some level of confidence that they will try and fix these things which is quite unusual and I've also noticed that these guys have started to brand their stick a bit more than the, the manufacturers I've seen which which seems to suggest that they're willing to build a brand around it and uh, try to get some consumer loyalty which would be which would be great I think so let me show you the setup I have I've got a stick plugged into the HDMI extension lead and then that lead plugs into the TV and what I've done is I've plugged the USB receiver for my RC11 remote control so I can control the unit wirelessly so check out my other video on the channel and then I'm using a separate power supply and it's actually the one that came from Zeal's uh, GK802. Okay so what I'm going to show you next is the boot up time for the stick and then I'll show you the results from the Antutu benchmark which I ran twice and then after that I'll finish off with uh, showing the stick running various applications and videos. So as soon as you boot up you can see this uh, CloudNet logo Go. and the boot up time from the moment you plug in the power supply to the time the main page comes up the home page is around 39 seconds and I found that this was fairly consistent. In terms of the Antutu benchmark scores I ran the test twice so one time it achieved 15,284 whereas another time it achieved 14,886. Alrighty uh, let's check out the applications. So first of all XBMC. I don't know if you can tell from the video here but certainly when I'm viewing the, the video I can see noticeable lip sync issues. Why has all this focus on security made me feel so much? I did see something similar in the MK808 mini TV stick as well before the finless Bob ROM was installed onto that. So what I then did was install XPMC Android and tried the video again and then what I found was the, the lip sync issues just disappeared. So you cling to hard matter identity. You become a Christian, Muslim, Jew. So in short, XPMC just works fine. Other applications, I tried YouTube, so the YouTube client works well. <laughs> Twitter application works fine. The Amazon application works fine. So if you're in the UK, you might want to use TV catch up to watch TV. I'm not sure if their service was just down, but it didn't work properly for me. 
One of the applications that comes with the stick is the eHome Media Center. So you can use this to play videos that are on the, on the local stick. I use this to access some media on the NAS on my wireless network and I found that it could play the media okay but I did find that and I've always found this in all the sticks I've used. There's certain videos it does uh, struggle with. I've not found out exactly why that is yet but the behavior is similar. In most videos it's fine but some HD video with high some HD videos with a high bit rate seems to struggle. I did notice the stick seems to work well with multitasking. So as you can see here in XPMC it's quite happy running the video and also doing other tasks um, in the background as well. Okay so one last thing I want to mention is the power button. So those of you who are not familiar with mini TV sticks may think that this is a small thing but some of the other sticks and their build don't actually include a power button and if you if you switch off the stick without shutting down then there's always the risk that you might corrupt the ROM. So it's fantastic that these guys at CloudNet have actually included a power button and it really does seem to do something as you can see here. Okay, so that's the end of part one of this video. In my next video, I'm gonna be trying the CR9 with Skype and two video cameras. And I'll be trying it out with the PlayStation controller and the USB hub and any other peripherals I've got lying around. Thanks for watching, catch you next time. Mini TV.